I've just got my belly button pierced and in this video I'm going to show you everything that happens after a belly button piercing including the aftercare, cleaning, what you need to avoid and the healing process. Everyone's experience and advice from their piercer may be slightly different but this is how mine went. So I was instructed to clean my piercing with a salt water solution twice a day for four weeks and then once a day for another four weeks. For the first month, these are all the things you should avoid. You should avoid swimming in chlorinated water or open water, so lakes, the sea, swimming pools. You should also avoid taking baths, but you can shower. You should avoid soaps and antiseptics to clean it with. Also, don't use alcohol because all of these can be too harsh on your freshly pierced piercing. I was just told to use salt water and that seems to be the general advice online. Also, try to avoid getting perfume or body lotions or fake hands or anything like that on the piercing. Mine's instructions also said do not cover unless working in a dirty or dusty environment. By this I think they mean don't like tightly seal it because it does need airflow to heal. It also says that everything that comes in contact with the piercing must be clean, so your hands, clothes, bedding, towels. And my instructions say do not change the jewellery for two to three months. A belly button piercing is more likely to have problems and take longer to heal and get infected just because of where it is on the body. You're constantly sort of like moving around, you're bending. So the belly button piercing will take between six and eight months to fully heal, but it can actually take longer if you have complications. So it can take like up to a year and sometimes even over a year for some people. I would say it's probably best to get a belly button piercing in the winter because that means that by the summer it's going to be healed so you can go so you can show it off and not have to worry about it still healing or anything. So I got mine done in February, which means by the summer it should be good to go. Those were the instructions that I had. These are some tips from other piercers that I found online, and these are all from actual piercers, so people that do piercings as a profession, rather than just random advice I found, okay? So all of this is legitimate advice. For about the first month, avoid high-waisted jeans, high-waisted clothes, anything that's tight around the belly because it will make it sore. Another one I didn't hear many people talk about was to avoid oral contact, so no mouths or tongues. Also try to avoid body fluids getting on it and keep pets away because pets carry a lot of bacteria as much as we love them and so try to keep them away, try to keep them out of your bed. It would just be more likely to get infected. For the first day or two, try to avoid like going to the gym and like doing heavy workouts because a lot of movement can irritate it and also sweat can irritate it so try not to do anything that's going to cause you to sweat a lot. I watched one video where a girl recommended rotating the bar every once in a while and I actually learnt from another piercer that you should not rotate the bar. You've got to just leave it be, leave it to heal, don't rotate it. This can just interfere with the healing process. You also need to make sure that the jewellery that you're getting pierced with isn't too small. Your first belly button piercing will be actually probably quite big because the length of the bar needs to be slightly longer longer in order to be pierced with and in order for it to heal properly. And if you have a professional piercer, they will obviously know this. Make sure you're going to a professional. Also, avoid sleeping on your stomach for as long as you possibly can, probably at least for the first month. And if you want to promote faster healing, try taking vitamin C, vitamin D and zinc. If you're finding this video helpful so far, please give it a thumbs up. Now we're going to move on to my experience and the healing process. Day one, getting the piercing. So I chose a silver bar with a large clear crystal in the claw design. These are actually prone to catching on things a little more so if you're worried about that I'd recommend going for something a little bit more simple or there is the crystal one which is a bit more enclosed like into a ball which won't catch as much. Getting the piercing itself was a very quick and very easy. There was no blood, there was no swelling, no pus, there was no redness, there was no tears, no crying, no fainting. It was really easier than I thought it would be. In in terms of the pain, I describe what it felt like in part one of this video. So I made a video where I actually get the, the piercing itself and so I'm going to leave that up here. It will also be in the description. If you want to watch that afterwards, please do. But after the initial pain of the actual piercing being done, it did not hurt at all. Yeah, it was a little bit sore for the rest of the day and I was very aware that it was there. but. 
it didn't hurt. If I bent down, it like was a little bit more sore, but as long as I didn't knock it or touch it, it really wasn't painful at all. I was instructed to wear a plaster for the first three hours after getting it pierced. I was ready to flaunt it around town. I wore this cute little belly top and we were gonna go shopping afterwards and I couldn't wait to just flaunt it around, but no, I had to wear a plaster. I don't know if this is standard procedure for every time you get belly button piercing, but that's what I was recommended to do while it's fresh to protect it. So that evening it was really fine. I just wore like low waisted tracky bottoms. It only hurt when I stretched and when I tried to lay on my stomach whilst watching TV. Couldn't do that. Lucky for me though, I'm a back sleeper, but if you are a stomach sleeper, I would try to avoid it for as long as you can. And the first night I didn't actually clean it because it was still quite fresh. So I began my cleaning routine on day two. Day two. So when I woke up the next day, it actually felt more sore. And this is actually because I wore high-waisted pajama shorts, so don't do that. Anyway, time for the first clean. My instructions were to mix one teaspoon of sea salt with one cup of boiling water. The better quality the salt is, the better it's gonna be. So if you have like organic salt or sea salt, then use a cotton swab or cotton ball with the salt water to clean the piercing with. I've heard some piercers say not to use a cotton swab. I'm not entirely sure why, but I've also seen other piercers recommend using a cotton swab. I used a cotton swab just because it was the easiest thing for me and I didn't have any problems with it. But if you're really worried about it, just do what your piercer recommends. Okay, so I'm now going to attempt to clean my belly button. Mm. There seems to be like some dried blood just like at the base where it's going into my skin. I'm taking a little cotton bud, I'm dipping it in the salt water. There wasn't much rhyme or reason to my cleaning technique. I just made sure to clean all around the pierced skin and the bar itself by pulling it out a little bit and the same for underneath which I'd actually recommend using a mirror for especially for the first week or so just to make sure you're getting off any residue underneath there. I also found it easier to have like a bottle of the salt water pre-mixed so that I didn't have to make it every single day. Okay so that was day two of my belly button piercing. Nothing really to report. There was a tiny bit of dried blood like just where it was going into my skin but nothing significant. There wasn't even much to clean off. So day two, three and and four. It was just a little bit sore and red around the piercing, but nothing too noticeable. I felt like I could pretty much go out and show it off pretty much straight away. But it wasn't until around day five onwards that it developed like a small scab and it was quite dry around the piercing. And you can see it started to look really quite sore. And when my friend first saw it, he actually thought it was infected, which then made me think that it was infected. I realized it was actually just still sore from healing. Like it's just healing. I cleaned off any dry dry skin residue every day for the following week and it was just still a bit sore and red. When I pulled the bar out to clean it a little bit, like a little bit of pus would come out, which I know is really gross, but it's just the reality of having a new piercing. So yeah, it pretty much looked kind of red like this for two weeks and I still find that when I pull it out even after seven weeks, like there is still a little bit of pus that comes out. Also, after the first couple of weeks, I did catch it a few times, which really freaking hurt. The worst was in the shower. I totally forgot that I even had a belly button piercing and I went to scrub my belly with like a flannel and it caught on it and it hurt like an absolute mother. So do be careful when you're washing yourself and if you do knock it really, really bad, it can actually take longer to heal. I also got it caught on the sheets a few times whenever I was laying on my tummy or shuffling around in bed. That hurt a lot too. But by three weeks, the redness had pretty much gone and it didn't look or feel sore. Then by one month, it was pretty much no longer sore at all. And by five weeks, I could now sort of touch it without it hurting or feeling sore, but I did still just try to avoid touching it as much as I possibly could unless I was cleaning it. So now it's been nearly seven weeks and it's healing really nicely. And to be honest, after the first week, even though I was still meant to be cleaning it twice a day, I would always forget. So I really only cleaned it about once a day and I definitely missed a couple of days as well. But I think generally having kept it clean and leaving it alone and not touching it is how I didn't get an infection. Also a quick note about dangly belly button piercings. I watched a few videos from this girl who used to wear 
a lot of dangly belly button rings and like decorative stuff and I think she had had her piercing for like over 10 years and she found that because the dangly jewellery was so heavy it had actually stretched out the skin and it had changed the appearance of her piercing. So she actually had to take her belly button ring out and she actually doesn't even wear it anymore as far as I'm concerned. So that's just something to keep in mind. I do think the dangly belly button piercings look so cute but I will probably only wear them for special occasions because if you're wearing them a lot they could stretch the piercing. But I definitely do want to get some different colours and shapes so let me know what you think I should get. I hope you found this video helpful. If you are getting your belly button pierced good luck it's gonna look awesome and make sure to watch part one of this video to see me getting my belly button pierced. It really wasn't that bad. Also make sure you subscribe so you can find me again. I have loads more videos on my channel and I always have extra content on my Patreon. Thank you so so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Mwah.